Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Angeline Wanjeri. If you're new to this channel, hello. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your post notifications so that you can get notified anytime I drop a video like I am about to do right here, right now, today for all of you guys. Happy new month, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic week. It is freaking cold out there and I hope everyone is keeping warm. Um, welcome to yet another episode of My Take. And on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing my take on this statement. What you misuse, you lose. What you end up misusing, abusing, mismanaging, you will end up losing. Now, a lot of us take God's gifts and blessings for granted. We misuse, abuse, and mismanage his gifts and blessings. And then we have the audacity to get down on our knees, to come before him and ask him for more. We pray to God and ask him for wealth. He provides you end up misusing, mismanaging, and abusing that wealth. You come before God and you ask, you ask him for good health. He blesses you with a healthy body. You end up misusing, mismanaging, and abusing that body. You come before God and you ask him for love, a perfect love. But when he sends that love your way, you end up misusing it, abusing it, and mismanaging it. You come before God and you tell him, I want a good husband. Lord, I want a good wife. But you end up misusing, abusing, and mismanaging that which God sends to you, that which God blesses you with. You come before God and you ask him for loving friends, a loving family, loving children, but you end up misusing, abusing, and mismanaging them. How then do you expect God to give you more? How do you expect God to bless you with more when you're constantly misusing, abusing, and mismanaging that which he has blessed you with? If anything, God will take away that which he has blessed you with because you have proven yourself to be undeserving of his gifts and of his blessings. King Solomon was one of the greatest kings that ever lived. One of the greatest kings that ever walked this earth. That was King Solomon. God blessed him with power. God blessed him with wealth. God blessed him with wisdom beyond measure. King Solomon was a blessed king. And all God asked of him was this. In 1 Kings chapter 9 verses 4 to 9. 1 Kings chapter 9 verses 4 to 9. This is what God asked of King Solomon. As for you, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws. I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David, your father, when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. But if you or your descendants turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them, and I will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. Israel will become a byword and an object of ridicule among the people. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and will scoff and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple? People will answer because they have forsaken the Lord, their God, who brought their ancestors out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshipping and serving them. That is why the Lord brought all this disaster on them. So God gave King Solomon a warning. That which I have given to you, I will take it all from you. If you dare disobey my commands, begin worshipping other gods before me, I will take all that I have given Everything that I have blessed you with, I will take from you. So God warned King Solomon. 
King Solomon was so revered. You know, he was such a famous, such a powerful king. You know, Queen Sheba had heard of him, had heard of the love that Solomon had for God. To the point where she decided to pay him a visit and ask him difficult questions. Let's see how he answers my questions. Let me question him about this Lord that he worships, this Lord that he serves. And let me see how he will answer these difficult questions. And Solomon ended up impressing her greatly to the point where she bestowed gifts upon him. She gifted him gold, precious stones, and spices. That is how powerful, that is how well-known King Solomon was. God loved him. His light shone upon him. King Solomon was great. But then, what did King Solomon do that disappointed and angered God greatly? King Solomon started marrying foreign wives, foreign women that God had warned him about. Do not intermarry. Do not intermarry. The people of Israel had been warned. King Solomon had been warned. Do not intermarry. But Solomon loved these foreign women. And he ended up marrying many of them. And they ended up turning his heart against God to the point where King Solomon started worshipping other gods. And this made the Lord very, very angry. It saddened him. It angered him that King Solomon had strayed away from him. And this is what God told him in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 9 to 13. 1 Kings um, chapter 11 verses 9 to 13. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. Remember, he had been warned, if you do not follow my decree, my commandments, everything I have given you, I will take from you. He was warned. So the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it in your lifetime. Now, this is very important to note because I'm going to speak on it. I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. That is what God said. I will not take from you during your lifetime. I will take from your son. Yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but I will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. A lot of us think that when we do things, the consequences are only hours to bear, but that is not true. Actions have consequences, yes, but sometimes those consequences end up affecting those people around us. King Solomon is one who sinned against God. King Solomon is one who betrayed God. King Solomon is the one who misused, abused, and mismanaged God's blessings, God, God's gifts that had been bestowed up upon him. But who ends up suffering? His son, King Solomon's son, God said, I will not take from you during your lifetime. So meaning, as long as you're alive, you will continue having this great kingdom, the wealth and everything I've bestowed upon you. But once you die, once this kingdom is no longer yours, I will take it from your son and give it to one of your subordinates. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? So when we misuse and mismanage and abuse our gifts, the blessings that God has bestowed upon us, other people, the people around us will suffer. Let me give an example. Imagine a man, for example, a man who has been blessed with a very healthy body, right? We pray to God for good health all the time. So imagine a man has been blessed with a very healthy body, but then he begins drinking. Yani he drinks Monday to Sunday. Yani raha, hepi nyake. Hepi. Kila siku, unakunywa kutoka subi mpaka jioni. Every time you are drinking, you are eating junk food. And then your body starts failing. Your kidneys start failing. Before you know it, you need 
a kidney transplant. You go to the doctors and you're told you need a kidney transplant. You have overdrunk. You have eaten the wrong foods. You have abused your body. You have misused your body. You have mismanaged your body for years. You need new kidneys. Now, let me ask you, who's going to suffer the consequences of this man's actions? Isn't it his family? The people that love him? Maybe his father? Because where else is a kidney going to come from? It may be his father, maybe his mother, or maybe his siblings. So because of your actions, your family is going to suffer. Not even counting the amount of money that is going to be spent on you. Taking you maybe out of the country, maybe to India where you can get the transplant. Then the dialysis that comes after. What happens if the kidney is rejected? You will put your family, the people who love you, through hell simply because you misused the good health, the healthy body that God blessed you with. So when you misuse and abuse and mismanage God's blessings, other people around you suffer for it. Other people around you suffer for it. Now let's flip the coin. While people, some people get blessed, others do not. Yani, you're coming before God and you're telling him, Oh Lord, bless me the house. Bless me with a big house. I want a four-bedroom, five-bedroom home. Oh Lord, bless me with a big car. I'm tired of this vits. Oh Lord, bless me with more money. Aki, I want to be rich. You're coming before God and asking him to bless you. As most people do. But then God is looking at the little that he has blessed you with. He's looking at that one bedroom mama bed sitter you're living in that is forever dirty. Yani, how we safishi, how we chungi. You don't take care of it. He's, you're asking God, I want a bigger car. He's looking at that vitz that has stained seats, that smells funny. You don't even take it for um, service when it needs to be serviced. You can't even take care of that small car, but you're asking for a Range Rover. Do you think God will bless you with that Range Rover? You can't take care of a bed sitter, but you're telling God, give me a four or five bedroom home. You're asking God for more money. But even that 5,000 that you have, you mismanage, you abuse it, you misuse it. So God knows, and you, if I bless this person with this house, I apana. They will misuse, abuse, mismanage. If I bless this person with this car, Pana, they will misuse, abuse, mismanage. If I bless this person with more money, Pana, they will not hack. You are showing God you cannot hack anything bigger. You cannot manage anything bigger. So he will only bless you based on what you have shown him you can handle. And that is why many of you remain small. Remain in those positions that you're telling God begging God to lift you out of. He cannot. Because that little he has given you, you're unable to manage. So if you want more from God, show him that the little he's giving you, you can manage it. You can use it wisely. And he will bless you. He will bless you with more. The little that you have, be grateful for it. Nourish it. Take care of it, love it, respect it, acknowledge it, and God will bless you with more. But misuse, be neglect, neglectful of, abuse, mismanage, he will not. He will not make the mistake of blessing you with more. Take care of the little that you have and watch God multiply. Watch him multiply. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope you enjoyed today's message. I hope it empowered you and gave you knowledge. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. I cannot wait to see what you guys have to say about today's My Take episode. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do make sure you subscribe. And I guess I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.